welcome into this week's edition of The Pole Position right here on Racing News Now. As always, I'm your host, Garth Allen. Thank you for joining me once again today as we have another action-packed episode here for you. Four races this weekend from the series that we cover. Uh, both the NASCAR Xfinity Series and the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series in action from the Richmond Raceway. The ARCA Racing Series was in action for their third race of the season from Salem Speedway, Salem, Indiana. And the IndyCar Series, although it took them two days to cover it, they were in Alabama at the Barber Motorsports Park for the Grand Prix of Alabama. So we got lots to get to. We're going to start with the ARCA Racing Series today. As I said, they were in Salem, Indiana for the Kentuckiana Ford Dealers ARCA 200 from the Salem Speedway. 200 laps around this very fast, high-banked, short track. And really, it was it was all Christian Eckes and all Chandler Smith most of the day. It was a Venturini Motorsports kind of day. Between the two of them led 189 of the 200 laps in this race. Chandler Smith alone led a race high 117 laps. Absolutely had the dominating car. Um, very, very good battle for the win between the two of them as we got right down to the end of the race. Unfortunately, as they took the white flag through one and two, uh, Chandler Smith had used up a lot of what he had getting mired back in the pack on a late restart. Finally made his way from fourth back up to second and had a very good battle with Christian Eckes for the win. Unfortunately, blows his right front tire in the middle of one and two. And that would end his day, and Christian Eckes would come home with his first career ARCA Racing Series victory in the Kentucky Anna Ford Dealers 200. Zane Smith, your winner from a couple weeks ago in Nashville, comes home in the second position after Chandler Smith's unfortunate happenings on the last lap. Uh, MDM teammate to Zane Smith, Sheldon Creed, comes home in the third position. Josh Berry in his first ARCA start. Uh, junior motorsports development driver. We've seen him a little bit throughout the NASCAR ranks. He's mainly been in the late models for junior motorsports, but he has made a couple Xfinity Series starts. His first ARCA start this weekend, and a very good showing for him in the 22 for Chad Bryant Racing. Comes home in the fourth position, and Chase Purdy, the third MDM car, rounds out the top five. Rest of your top ten, Riley Herbst for Joe Gibbs Racing comes home in a strong sixth position. Gus Dean, Colby Howard, Brandon Grosso, and Chandler Smith rounds out the top 10. Smith would end up in the 10th position, uh, first car one lap down after not completing that final lap. Uh, other notables down through the field. I want to look at Natalie Decker here. Um, had a very, very fast car. Um, did not show a lot of speed throughout the weekend. Um, if you had looked at her in practice and qualifying, really didn't show any speed. Uh, very far down on the speed charts in practice. I think she finally ended up in 15th in practice and then qualified in 12th. So found a little bit of speed after practice into qualifying, but still not a lot of speed. And then as they start the race, she's kind of mired back there in the 12th, 13th position. Don't really think she's going to do much. And then all of a sudden, around lap 25, her car must have had some really good long run speed because they're about lap 25, 30. All of a sudden, she finds some speed and goes from 12th to 5th in a matter of like 10 laps and was running down 3rd and 4th until a caution came out. She got mired back in the pack again after this caution and ends up getting involved in a wreck back in the pack, and that would basically end her day. She kind of just rode around for the rest of the day, ends up eight laps down in the 17th position. Definitely not the day that uh, Natalie Decker was looking for, but very promising day, very a lot of speed, and now we move on to Talladega Super Speedway on Friday for ARCA. Um, a track very similar to Daytona that she showed a lot of speed at, won the pole in Daytona, and uh, ended up in the fifth position. So Talladega may be the place where Natalie turns around her season after uh, two fairly disappointing weeks outside the top ten for her. But Venturini Motorsports just on an incredible start to this season. They've won the pole in every race thus far this season. As we mentioned, Natalie Decker wins the pole in Daytona, 
and Chandler Smith now has won the last two polls um, at Nashville and Salem. So just an incredible start to the season. That's two out of three wins for them as well. If you remember back, Michael Self won at Daytona, and now Eckes wins in Salem. So Venturini Motorsports on a tear here to start the ARCA racing season. We were able to catch up with Christian Eckes um, immediately following the race from Salem Speedway, so we're, we'll jump to that interview right now and see what Christian had to say after his first career ARCA Racing Series victory. A good day for you overall, though. You had a very fast car. Um, I think even a little faster than probably what you expected. Yeah, you know, I, I definitely thought we had a race run car uh, to start today, but you know, as a whole, the race, how it played out, uh, I mean, this was a team win. You know, pit crew, pit crew did awesome. I didn't make any mistakes, and uh, we were on a great, great car. Um, so as a whole, you know, it was just it was a, it was a great day for us, really great day for us. Um, you know, when we're in the owners' points battle and stuff like that, it means even more. And uh, you know, it, like I said before, I haven't won it since December. 6, 2016, and that's been stuck in my mind forever and haunting me. And, you know, to finally get this monkey off our back, you know, hopefully we'll be able to string out a couple more of these. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, as a whole, it was just it's a great day, really great day. What kind of momentum does this give you going forward? I know you're not going to be uh, in the car on Friday at Talladega, but you're back at uh, Toledo, I believe. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, what kind of momentum does that give you going forward through the rest of your season? I mean, a ton of momentum. Um, you know, last time I won a race uh, was actually at the start of three. And it's, it's the rest two of the year, so you know, hopefully I'll be able to win every single race at the end of, or not through the, <laughs> till the end of the year. But uh, the same aspect, we're just gonna have to take it one step at a time, execute like we did today. And um, you know, like I said, it's just so it was a great day. It was a really great day. It's a team win, and uh, you know, I'm really happy for all my Venery Motorsports guys. You know, I can't thank JBL. Toyota Racing, uh, Venergy Motorsports, um, you know, Billy, Kevin, Kevin Jr., Alex, just everybody that's really puts this deal together. And, uh, they brought me a great piece today. And, yeah, it's just it's a great day. It's a great day to be here. All right. Well, thank you, Christian, and congratulations. Appreciate it. And we want to thank Christian for taking the time to talk to us after the race as well as before the race. If you were uh, keeping an eye on RNN this weekend, you would have seen that uh, – we did have a couple pre-race interviews before the race, not quite as many as I was wanting, but it was a little harder to track down drivers in Salem this weekend than I was expecting it to be. But we did uh, get a hold of Christian Eckes and Chandler Smith uh, yesterday morning from Salem, so those are up on the channel if you missed those. Now let's take a quick look at the point standings for the ARCA Racing Series. Following the third event of the 2018 campaign, uh, Michael Self obviously has lost the points lead now after holding it for two weeks as he was not in Salem. Falls to 7th in the points, actually tied for 6th. Sheldon Creed has assumed the points lead after a very strong start to the season. Uh, consistently in the top 5 to start this season. Um, and he holds a commanding 90 point lead over his teammate Zane Smith. Um, and that should tell you something as Creed does not have a win so far this season. Zane Smith does in Nashville and still holds a 90-point lead over Zane Smith. Um, that's how consistent Sheldon Creed has been through the first three races of this season. Joe Gibbs Racing driver Riley Herp sits in the third position. Uh, Natalie Decker falls one spot to fourth, and Chase Purdy holds down the fifth position. That really probably is your five championship contenders this season, the five that we're going to be looking at going forward as the best shots to win the championship this season. Obviously, the, the three MDM Motorsports drivers are there. The one full-time driver that Venturini has this season in Natalie Decker, and then Joe Gibbs Racing driver from Riley Herbst. So we'll keep close eye on them as we go throughout the season and see how that plays out. Now let's move on to the IndyCar stuff from... Uh, earlier today really well they finished earlier today started the race yesterday uh, that is the Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama from the Barber Motorsports Park and Joseph Newgarden just absolutely dominated this one was not an easy win as we came down late in the race with all the rain happening again uh, as we got down to the later portions of the race today um, was able to manage the tires and uh, 
get the right strategy with the rain and still come out with the victory. So Joseph Newgarden wins his second race in four weeks uh, for the IndyCar Series. Uh, rest of your top five, Ryan Hunter Ray came home in the second position. A strong showing for Schmidt Peterson racing this weekend with James Hinchcliffe in third and Robert Wickens in fourth. And Sebastian Bourdais, who had a very strong run, unfortunately kind of didn't play out the strategy quite right with the rain at the end, comes home in the fifth position. Had a very exciting battle coming to the checkers with Scott Dixon, barely able to hold off Dixon for that fifth position. Uh, Bourdais... The only other driver besides Newgarden to even lead laps in this race, Bourdais led nine laps, whereas Newgarden led the other 73 in this race. Rest of your top ten, Scott Dixon, Graham Rahal, Takuma Sato, Simon Pagano, and Marco Andretti rounds out the top ten. Our pick on the day, Alexander Rossi, just a little bit off all day. Um, comes home in the 11th position, wasn't ever really a threat to win. Uh, Zach Veach had a great day. Uh, running inside the top 10 there around 5th, 6th most of the day. Started in 6th. Uh, unfortunately, he was another one of those guys didn't quite play the rain strategy right at the end. Falls back to 13th. And Tony Kanaan, problems early. Comes home in the 18th position. Ed Jones, also with mechanical problems. Comes home in 20th. Will Power had problems. Lap 9. That was in the portion of the race that ran yesterday. Um... Only completed nine laps, and this one comes home in the 21st position. Max Chilton, mechanical problems, lap eight. He is out, finishes 22nd. And Charlie Kimball out after contact on lap seven. Comes home shotgun on the field in 23rd. Now, before we wrap up the IndyCar series, we'll take a look quickly at the point standings here. And one thing you'll notice here at the top of the board, obviously Joseph Newgarden has assumed the points lead this week over Alexander Rossi as Rossi falls to second, as we noted with the somewhat disappointing run in the 11th position, now trailing Newgarden by 13 points. Sebastian Bourdais leapfrogs over Graham Rahal into third, dropping Rahal to fourth. Ryan Hunter Ray up to sixth as he drops Scott Dixon down to seventh. Robert Wickens with the biggest jump of the week up four spots to the eighth position. Will Power drops two with his early problems in Barber. He is now down to the tenth position. Marco Andretti up one to ninth. Ed Jones drops two down to eleventh. Tony Kanaan down one to twelfth. And then Simon Pagano and Spencer Piggott flip-flop each other down at the bottom here. Uh, Pagano up to 15th and Spencer Piggott down to 16th. So that's your points for the Verizon IndyCar Series following week number four from the Barber Motorsports Park, the Honda Indy Grand Prix of Alabama. Now we will move to the NASCAR side of things for this weekend. And we'll start off with the Xfinity Series. They were in action on Friday night running the Toyota Care 250 from Richmond. 250 laps and a fantastic race all the way down to the end between teammates Christopher Bell and Noah Gragson. You know, I said it on RNN Talks last week. Um, it would be impressive if Noah Gragson could win his first race his first time out. I didn't think it was going to happen. It didn't happen, but it came very close to happening. He was giving Christopher Bell everything he could handle in those final laps. Noah Gregson did lead 10 laps on the night. Um, and another thing that I mentioned was that uh, Christopher Bell was probably the, the obvious choice um, after being so fast in Bristol and probably should be the pick on the night and wasn't. And yet again... I am wrong, and my second choice, or the, the guy that I say should obviously be the choice, ends up winning the race. So, I yeah, I don't even know why I make predictions, to be honest, because I look back and I just laugh on them. I don't, know, I don't know how this ends up happening almost every time. So, rest of your top five from Richmond. Elliott Sadler, Matt Tift with a very strong run in the fourth position, and Austin Sendrick with another top five. Rounds out the top five and fifth. 
Rest of your top 10, Cole Custer, Ryan Truex, strong run for Jeremy Clements in 8th, Ryan Reed, and Brandon Jones rounding out that top 10. Other notables, your Daytona winner, Tyler Reddick in 11th, Jeb Burton, his first start of the season in that three car for Richard Childress Racing. With an impressive 12th place finish, John Hunter Nemechek showed some speed on the night, uh, 36 laps led, um, comes home in a disappointing 13th place finish. Justin Allgaier, 14th, as we look more down through the field, Chase Briscoe with a disappointing night, four laps off the pace in 26th, Daniel Hemrick, problems uh, in the middle portions of the race. Had a strong car, was up there running up front uh, before his problems. Uh, unfortunately, comes home four laps off the pace in 29th after leading 11 laps. So now we will head over to the Richmond Media Center. We will see what Christopher Bell had to say after his first win of the season, second Xfinity win of his career. Yeah, obviously this is a very important race for Toyota, the whole Toyota racing development and Toyota Motorsports or Motor Sales family. So uh, thankfully we had a really good Camry. All of JGR's cars have been really fast for the last couple weeks now, and it's really shown. Um, they had JGR as a company could have ran one, two, three at, at Bristol and should have ran one, two with Brandon Jones and Ryan Priest last week. And then uh, they did run one, two with myself and Noah this week. So that says a lot about the guys at the shop building really fast race cars, and uh, thankfully I'm the guy that gets to drive one of them. Now we'll quickly take a look at the Xfinity Series points before moving on to the cup action from Saturday night. Not a lot of movement this week. Uh, really the only change being that Christopher Bell now slots in at the top of the playoff grid after his win, um, and he is now... Just slightly above Tyler Reddick in points. That's why he slots in in first. Uh, actually, only two points difference between the two right now. Uh, the only other movements besides that, Matt Tift moves up one spot above Ryan Reed as Tift moves back up to 10th and Ryan Reed down to 11th. Michael Annette gained a couple spots up to the 14th position and Kaz Grala dropped one down to 15th. So that's really your only changes in points this week for the Xfinity Series. So now we will move on to the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series. They were in action Saturday night for the Toyota Owners 400. And same thing we've been saying all April. Kyle Busch wins again. Third straight win for Kyle Busch. Um, first time since... Uh, 2015 that Kyle Busch has won three races in a row and I believe if I'm not mistaken I couldn't find any other instances of it if I'm wrong uh, let me know down in the comments but I believe this is the only time two different drivers have won three straight races in the same season or if it's not it's got to be the first time two different drivers have won three straight races in the first nine races of the season I mean that's absolutely crazy we had Kevin Harvick win second, third, and fourth race of the season in Atlanta, Vegas, and Phoenix. And now we've got Kyle Busch doing it at Texas, Bristol, and Richmond. Just crazy how these guys can just go on runs like this. And, it, and it's not just one guy doing this. We've now had two guys do it. Um, I'm not sure that's ever happened before. If it has, like I said, let me know. But I don't think this has ever happened before. And... Chase Elliott, with a strong run on the night, wasn't really up front contending for the win most of the night. Just kind of found himself there at the end on that uh, overtime restart and made the most of it. Comes home in second. I don't know that he had a car to beat Kyle Busch there at the end, but uh, he made a run at it nonetheless. Uh, Denny Hamlin. Joey Logano comes home in the fourth position. He won both stages. Uh, very strong showing for Joey Logano. Uh, very well noted that it has been a year now since Joey Logano has won a race as it was this race in the 2017 season that was Logano's last victory even though it was encumbered and that kept him out of the playoffs last year um, but that was the last time Joey Logano has been to victory lane uh, we'll see how much longer that uh, will be before he gets to victory lane He's been up front all season. I mean, he's he's leading the points for the guys that have not 
won a race yet. So he's been very consistent to start the season and has been up front every week, basically, just has not been able to put it all together at the end and win a race. Kevin Harvick rounds out your top five. Rest of your top ten, Jimmy Johnson rebounds from a very disappointing night, got caught back in the pack early, uh, was stuck a lap down for a lot of the race. So you look through the running order, and he was down there 20th. First car one lap down most of the night. Um, then ends up getting the free pass on one of those late cautions and somehow rebounds his way to 6th. So uh, kudos to Jimmy Johnson for uh, salvaging what was um, what looked to be a very bad night for most of the night. Kyle Larson, Brad Keselowski, Clint Boyer, and Daniel Suarez round out the top 10. William Byron with a very strong run in the 12th position. Had a very fast car. 12th actually not indicative of where he ran most of the night. He ran as high as 3rd. Had a very strong car. I'm looking forward to seeing what William Byron can do for the rest of the season. Had a very rocky start to the season. Was not very fast those first few weeks of the season. Seems to have figured out these cup cars now and is has been running up front the past few weeks. Um, I would not be surprised to see William Byron win a race here before the end of the season as well as he has started running here of late. It would not surprise me. Uh, Down through the rest of the field, a strong run for Matt DiBenedetto in 16th. Eric Almirola had a very fast car Saturday night as well, as high as second at one point. I believe that was the end of stage one that he got up to second, and then he was third in stage two. Very fast car um, out of that 10 bunch for Eric Almirola. Unfortunately, kind of lost that speed late. And as we see, not uh, the greatest result for Eric Almirola there in 17th. Alex Bowman, for whatever reason, that 88 car seemed to be off all night. Uh, Never really ran up front or contended really for, for anything. Um, 18th on the night for Alex Bowman. A disappointing night for Ryan Blaney comes home in 22nd. He's had a few bad weeks here in a row. Um, see if he can rebound from that soon. Paul Menard, who has been, uh, I think, impressing a lot of people this year and what he can do in what is basically Penske equipment in that Wood Brothers car, um, had an off night as well, 24th. Bubba Wallace, I think we expected more out of him this week after... Um, leading laps last week in Bristol. Uh, unfortunately, 25th was all he could muster on Saturday night. One lap down. Strong run, uh, or stronger than normal, for Ross Chastain in 28th. And then as we look at the bottom of the pecking order, Ryan Newman taken out in an accident late in the going. Uh, 32 laps from the finish. Uh, Ryan Blaney, or Ryan Newman, getting my Ryans mixed up here. Ryan Newman comes home uh, 34 laps off the pace in 37th. So that's your results from the Toyota Owners 400. Now we'll head back over to the Media Center. And for the third straight week, we will see what Kyle Busch had to say after his win in Richmond. Uh, Well, it was a a great night tonight. You know, I wasn't sure we were going to have any dominance, and I don't think we necessarily did, but uh, we certainly put ourselves in position all night long to have that opportunity and that chance to go out there and, and win the race. Thanks to our pit crew. Guys did an amazing job. Those last two pit stops got us out front uh, where we needed to be, got us a lead, and uh, our car was fast enough on the short run to be able to hold on to it right there. So, um, you know, we knew. I thought I thought the four and the, and the 14 were probably the best on the long haul, especially after about lap 60. They, uh, they seemed to be pretty good. Um, that, that one run that came... I don't know, uh, that green flag cycle of stops, I, it seemed like I was kind of closing in on those guys a little bit, and I was just trying to bide my time and see if uh, see if the race was going to go green to the end. You know, you're trying to pick out your your tire strengths, uh, and that was going to be, what, 68 laps to the end or so? Yeah. Yeah, so, you know, trying to bide my time and just try to hold on to the car and make sure I had tire to be able to race those guys if it came down green all the way, but um, it didn't, and uh, we had some pit stops, so pretty cool to win three in a row i mean that's really special um certainly we we did that in in 15 and almost won uh four in a row we ran out of gas a half a lap to go and next week we go to talladega so i think it's easier to win the powerball than to win at talladega but um we'll we'll give it a go anyways we'll see what we get and uh to to tie another hall of famer certainly uh means a lot you know it's it's a huge deal to 
continue to climb the ladder of wins. Um, you know, I'm, I, I don't know what else to say. Just I, I got to be thankful of, of Joe, Joe Gibbs Racing, and uh, Toyota TRD, M&Ms, everybody that's been our partners that's helped me get to this point in my career. And having Adam Stevens as my crew chief these last uh, three, four seasons has just been uh, a phenomenal experience, and, and uh, we'll just keep digging. So now let's take a look at the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series playoff grid before we wrap up here tonight. A little bit more movement on the Cup side than what we saw on the Xfinity side this week. Uh, after Ryan Blaney's disappointing run, he falls one spot uh, as Denny Hamlin jumps up a spot. Kurt Busch jumps over Kyle Larson as Larson falls one. Ryan Newman and Paul Menard both drop two spots out of the playoff grid as Jimmy Johnson and William Byron both jump to, they are now in the playoff grid in 15th and 16th. First time, I think that is very, very notable. First time Jimmy Johnson has been in the playoff grid this season. We are nine races in. And if you think about it, that's actually a really big jump for him and a really big turnaround because we were talking after Atlanta how... He had less points than guys that didn't even race in Atlanta, that only raced in Daytona. He was down below 66-year-old Mark Thompson, who only ran in Daytona, didn't run in Atlanta, and Mark Thompson had more points than Jimmy Johnson after Atlanta. So if you think about it, this is a huge turnaround for Jimmy Johnson, and uh, I know the Jimmy Johnson fans are excited to see this as... Uh, I don't think this is going to be quite the bad year that it was looking like it was going to shape up to be for Jimmy Johnson. I think those Hendrick guys are finally turning the corner here. They've got three of the four cars in the playoffs at the moment. Chase Elliott's still mired back in 20th after he's had so many bad luck races to start this season. I wouldn't be surprised to see him jump into the playoffs here very soon as well. He's only... Uh, what are we looking at here? Uh, 17 points behind his teammate William Byron in 16th. So it's not going to take a lot for Chase Elliott to get into the playoffs. I don't think it'll happen this week. I don't think we'll see him in the playoff grid after Talladega. Uh, but I think two, maybe three weeks down the road, I think we'll be talking about Chase Elliott back in the playoff grid. And hopefully for the Hendrick Motorsports fans out there, all four cars are still in the uh, the playoffs at that point. Uh, Chase Elliott doesn't displace one of his teammates. So I think that will do it for us tonight here on the pole position. Uh, thank you for joining us tonight. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications. It's the only way you can... Uh, keep up to date on what is happening here on RNN, especially for our at the track coverage stuff. Uh, if you're not subscribed, if you're only following on uh, Facebook or however it may be, if you just happen to stumble upon one of these videos while searching through YouTube, you're not going to necessarily find the at the track stuff as it happens because we don't post it on Facebook, none of that. It just it happens as it happens, and and you just have to see it. Um, and that was that was the case this weekend in Salem. That was the case uh, two weeks ago in Nashville. Um, you just got to be subscribed and have those notifications turned on. And you will get those uh, interviews and whatever else we happen to put up from the track as they happen. So, like I said, don't forget to subscribe. Hit that like button if you like the video. It is much appreciated when you do. And don't forget to support us on Patreon. That's patreon.com slash racing news now. It's the only way we can continue to give you better and better quality content into the future. So with that, this has been the pole position where you always start on the front row. I'm Garth Allen for Racing News Now. Yeah.